Hey everybody, in this video we're pouring a 36 by 24 concrete slab for a garage. I'm going to walk you through all the steps it takes to get something like this poured. If you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I live in Maine. I'm a concrete contractor that specializes in all types of flat work. This is one type of job we do all the time. Concrete slabs, whether they're for garages or houses. We also pour a lot of concrete floors inside foundations, whether they're frost walls or basement floors. And then we do a lot of stamp concrete, pool decks, patios, sidewalks, all types of flat work stuff. So if you're inter interested in that stuff, you know, please consider subscribing. And if you like these types of videos, please smash the like button. So what goes into a pour like this is there's a lot of pre-planning, obviously, with the, the site contractor. There's a separate site contractor that comes in here and he does all the excavation. So he digs out anything that needs to be dug out, the soil, the loom, rocks, grass, whatever. And then he puts in this type of road base right here. It looks like he put in almost two feet of it, compacts it really good. And then he tapers the edges. So we call this a haunched slab or like an Alaskan type slab is what we call something like this. The edges are about 18 inches thick. You know, you can see kind of how wide they are. They're about a foot wide on the bottom. Then they taper up to about a six inch slab in the middle. And then we got the wire mesh tied in there really nice with a double roar rebar around the edges. And the edges, I mean, the edges are probably gonna take as much or more concrete than the actual flat part of the slab is gonna take. We got three loads ordered here coming. This is the first truck. Two more are sitting out in the parking lot. It's about 6.30 in the morning. We, we typically like to pour real early in the morning, especially if it's hot in the summer. Um, and we usually pour stuff like this every single day. So we got first load out of the concrete plant every single day, whether it's one, two, three, four loads, whatever we're pouring that day. Now, the guy over there in the black sweatshirt with the, the DeWalt, pencil vibrator that's Jim he's the one we're working for today he actually set the forms himself he does foundations but sometimes he'll get slabs like this and he'll get them formed up and ready for us and then he hires us to come in and pour them so there's a lot of work that there's probably more work actually that goes into the forming of these slabs than there is the pouring of the slabs and especially one when you're stacking you know a 2 by 8 like he has on top of a 2 by 12 and then you get all the braces and the forms, you know, the metal pins. This was, some of this was on ledge, actually. So up back where we're starting right there, the top of the form is the top of the slab. And then as we moved towards the concrete truck and then towards the front of the slab, the boards were sitting on, <coughs> excuse me, sitting on the ledge. So we couldn't get the top of the form to grade. So we had to snap a chalk line down in there. So... As you see, as you see us pour the slab and you see the concrete a little bit below the top of the form, that's why it's still flat, it's still level. It's just that the, we couldn't get the forms down to grade because of the ledge underneath. You can see one of the main, one of the toughest things with pouring these, especially when there's ledge underneath them, is trying to keep the form straight. Uh, Jim and Harvey are over there right now trying to get that form back in. He's got a string line around the top of that board. And that's what he's going by to keep it straight. And there's just so much pressure from the concrete pushing that board out. Even with all the braces he's got, still wants to move a little bit. So you got to just manipulate it as you go. It almost takes one person just to keep the forms, making sure the forms stay straight as you pour a slab like this. Now I'm running the chute, so I got the chute going. I'm directing the concrete driver. You know, when I want him to pull ahead, if I need him to back up. Uh, we're running the drum of the concrete truck at a certain speed. We're not trying to go too fast, but we don't want to go so slow that it takes forever, especially with these thick edges. And then we're pulling up the mesh and the rebar as we go. Sometimes we'll do it this way. Sometimes we'll put what we call like slab bolsters under the wire to get it pulled up. It just depends what's available, you know, when we when we come to pour today sometimes that all that stuff isn't available we could put bricks under it too i guess but when we pull it up like this the the concrete's got three quarter inch stone in it it's got a, a lot of aggregate in it so even when you walk back on it after you pull it up it doesn't go all the way back down the bottom and 
We also use fiber mesh in the concrete, so it's got the, the fiberglass reinforcement in the concrete itself, along with the wire mesh. So it's going to be a really, a really uh, strongly reinforced concrete slab. And like I said, there's a builder here that's separate from all this. The builder guy is the one that actually hired Jim in the back, and and he'll be coming to build the slab afterwards. So you know we don't even see him today. We just we get the concrete poured, we'll get it power trialed, and you know get it just ready to go for the building. That was where that truck is over there on the right. It's actually in behind like a convenience store, kind of right next to that parking lot. And that was the only access we had. Over here we, with a camera sitting, we couldn't get a concrete truck in here because there were some big piles of dirt there. So they didn't really leave us that great of access. But it was good enough where we use our little, we got that little eight foot chute you see there. As long as we could hook that on, we could reach the other end pretty good. So there's one truck right there. That's about eight, eight yards of concrete right there. Doesn't take very long to dump something out with those thick edges. It doesn't seem like it goes very far either, but you know it is what it is they couldn't get they couldn't get enough concrete truck concrete on two trucks the the most a concrete truck will haul here where we are in Maine is ten and a half yards that's what they can haul legally on the roads for weight I mean the drum itself will probably hold like 11 but the most they'll put on is ten and a half so I think we got three eights coming it's around 24 yards you can see Jim's still back there fighting those forms a little bit. You know, so everybody's got a job. Jim and Harvey are trying to keep the forms straight. Luke was over there. He's kind of magging the edges. Now he's going to help him with the forms. Darren's over there on the left. You can see the laser set up over there on the left. So Darren's getting the grade stick. And what he's going to do is he's going to shoot a wet pad in the middle for us to strike off from for our screed. And that's what gets the, that's what we use for grades in the middle when we screed you'll see that in a minute and I'm over there directing truck so I want to get this first truck out of the way get him back to where he's gonna wash and then we'll get the, the second truck backed in like like I do right now and just he'll be mixed he's mixing up and getting ready to go because it's it's not gonna take us too long to get this screeded especially where it's kinda only with this one bay in the back there where I'm raking it out right now I'm just well, I call that tuning it in. I'm trying to get the concrete as close as I can to grade without getting it too high or too low. So when we do go to screed, and Darren's going to grab the screed right here, we're going to use a 14-foot screed on this. You know, when we do go to screed this, hopefully we can, you know, start screeding and not have to stop until we're done that bay. You can see the pad he's got in the middle. He used that grade stick on. That's right to grade. So that's the same height as top of form. And we're going to just use that to strike off them. We call it a wet pad. And Darren will just press down as hard as he needs to to strike off to the very top of that wet pad without, without digging into it. But Luke got the edges all mag. Now he's going to grab a come along. Harvey's in there with a come along. And those guys are going to rake the concrete for us. We call this puddling. So they're going to puddle the concrete. <laughs> I don't know. There might be a better term for it. What do you guys use? But we've always used puddling. They're going to rake the concrete in behind the guys screeding. Their job is to make sure it's not low and make sure it's not too high. And if anything, we'd want, we want it a little high behind the screed. Definitely don't want it low. Especially when we kick screed like this. We like to screed and kick and fill our feet in as we go so we don't have to stop. That's what kind of speeds things up for us and makes the screeding process a little faster. Now, all this time the guy over there on the right, the guy, the concrete driver, he's he's got his creep mixed up, ready to go. He just, I just saw him run some out the end of the chute to check it to make sure he's pretty close to the same the same slump as the first truck was and for those guys those of you guys who don't know what slump is slump is just a term we use for how wet or how dry the concrete looks or feels it's pretty much based on a number system from one to ten so one would be really really dry stiff concrete that wouldn't even run down the chute it would be so dry 
and then 10 would be like way too wet kind of watery we like it kind of right in the middle right around a, a six inch slump is what we usually tell the driver we want and that's a really good workable slump E. Harvey's really cranking up on the wire and the rebar as we go. Darren's now going to hit the bow float. Get that part smoothed off and that's pretty, that'll be just pretty much done until we get ready to power trial it. And Jim's over there. He's just magging out the edges. He's going to stop putting in some anchor bolts here in a minute too. So the garage doors are actually the, towards the front here, the way the camera is, the front of the garage. And the three sides, the back and the, the right and the left, We'll all get anchor bolts then the only anchor bolts that'll go in the front will be just kind of in between the garage doors I think there's two nine foot doors going in here and then there'll be some on the sides you'll see that later in the video Let's see how high Harvey's cranking up on that rebar trying to get it up as close to the middle as he can The code for the town we're working in today requires, you know, 18 inch thick edges and, you know, about 16 to 18 inches wide, you know, with a taper like this. So they probably actually average more than that as far as the concrete goes, but it really, really makes for a, a thick edge on the outside of these things, especially when it's, you know, it's just a single story garage. So the edges are probably a little overkill for what the garage really needs, the weight of the garage. But if you want to pour these slabs in this town, this is the way you got to do it. Jim's also got that little DeWalt pencil vibrator running. So that, when he strips the forms off, that's going to make that edge look really, really smooth. So you can see everybody's got a job with five of us. Darren's bull floating. Luke and Javi were kind of breaking down the concrete. Now Luke's going to jump over there and start magging the edges. Now he's going by the chalk line over there. You can see we're down inside the forms just a little bit. Jim's kind of watching the edges, making sure they stay straight, smoothing them out with the vibrator, and then I'm, I'm directing the truck so we can keep the pour going. So I'm going to set him over a little bit, and then I'm going to back him back up. And then we'll hook that chute back on and try to get him emptied out and get him out of the way so we can get the third truck pulled right in. It's always just a basic, you know, a process when we do these. And what, what's cool about it with these guys, you know, everybody's really experienced. Everybody knows what to do. No one's really giving orders or telling anybody what to do. We just, everything kind of falls into place. Which makes pouring a slab like this, you know, a 36 by 24 slab actually pretty fast I didn't cut really that much out of this video I cut a few minutes out here and there but I mean it probably didn't take us much longer than what the actual length of the video is to get this slab poured that shoot comes in handy that's a lifesaver I don't know we've we've worn shoots out like that we've actually worn holes in them from pouring so much concrete using those shoots I don't know how many we've gone through but that one's that one's getting really thin it's probably probably three or four years old now but before that before that concrete sets up too much we're gonna get it screeded out that's why we jump back in there it's actually it's pretty warm out this morning a little windy but we want to just get that concrete screeded before it the slump of it starts changing and getting stiffer, which makes it definitely harder to screed, and it makes it harder to bolt float too. What do you guys think so far? Do you like these kind of videos? If you do, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Yeah, while the guys, while the guys start dumping this this second truck out and get him empty, I, I'm gonna jump up there with a bull float and just do that. That's what that's what I like about working with these guys. No one, no one cares what they do, as long as we get the work done. It doesn't really matter. No one's, you know, no one's got just one job. Everybody does whatever needs to be done at that moment in time, and 
No one's arguing over what to do. All we really care about is just getting this thing in and making all our jobs easier. So now we're done with the shooting. You can see the, the guy that's got the hose, he's the third truck driver. So we haven't even started using him yet. He's sitting back there in the parking lot. But that's another thing that makes makes our jobs easier is these drivers that we work with. This company is uh, Auburn Concrete, and they're probably 20, 15, 20 minutes from this job. But their drivers, they don't mind jumping right in. They'll do whatever they can to help help speed things up too. So... Before the concrete starts drying on the chute, he's just going to grab the hose, rinse it off for us, then he'll get the chute out of the way. And then, uh, you know, he's right ready to start helping no matter what. We don't even have to ask him to do this stuff. kind of just takes one guy almost just to pull up the wire and the rebar on a job like this make sure it stays up so far the forms on this side of the slab have, have stayed in place I don't know just there wasn't much there wasn't much gravel in off the backfill in that back corner back there where we started that's why them forms kind of Kind of move just a little bit. He Jim's back there now, way in that back corner where we started putting the anchor bolts in. This will have this will have two by six walls, so he'll put them in about two and a half inches, and he likes to leave them sticking up about two and a half inches, and then he measures them. He puts them about every four feet. That truck's empty, so this is the second truck down. I'm gonna run right up the chute real quick, empty that chute out, get it cleaned out. And that way they won't won't make much of a mess when he goes to wash out in the back of that parking lot. So what we're doing now is we're gonna get the edges magged. You can see they're down inside the form just a little bit. I'm shooting the pad in the middle using the laser to get that. Harvey's vibrating the edge to make sure that's nice and smooth and then Darren and Luke can get that edge mag. Jim's back there putting in anchor bolts. And the third truck, the third truck's out there and he's getting ready to back in. So he's got backed in, he's mixing up right now. And we're just keeping, we're just keeping everything moving. You know, we're up around 20 minutes probably right now at this point with two trucks emptied and half not quite half the floor screeded but getting towards half the slab screeded what makes the screeding part really really easy on something like this is the two guys raking you can see the the motion there and they're pretty much using the same motion and they're trying to time their motion with the same motion as the screed so they don't push up against the screed when we're pulling and kind of splatter the concrete on the screed I guess they want to have the same motion as the guys with the screed so it has all the same rhythm that makes screeding really really fast so a bay you know a bay like that might take about a minute actually to screed down So they'll be just pushing and pulling the concrete for whatever they need and if you know if they don't need any then they still they still keep in rhythm with the same motion they just don't push anything or don't pull anything yeah, that makes it pretty fast so we're on to the third truck and again everybody's just doing what they need to do to get this done and Jim's back there trying to keep up with the anchor bolts. <laughs> he likes he likes those stainless steel anchor bolts, so they they don't rust out. But man, them things are expensive. He 
you see we don't run the concrete too too fast to, to overwhelm everybody usually if you run it too fast and the concrete driver doesn't care he'll run it at whatever speed we ask him to but if you run it too fast you tend to get the concrete too high and it just kind of kind of makes everybody's job a little bit harder the closer you can get it what we call right to grade the first time here it makes everybody's job easier so that's why we don't run it like crazy fast we probably could go a little bit faster than what we're doing especially right here where the edges are thicker but remember we got to keep an eye on that string too to make sure they don't stop their forms don't stop bowing out which is just what Jim's checking right now You see Darren went back there and he just grabbed the bull float. He's like, well, I'll do it this time. Let me get this done. Quite the wire puller there, ain't it? <laughs> we also use that as a pump hose hook. So... If we're pumping concrete and we got to pull the hose around, we'll use that same thing to pull the hose around as we're pouring a floor or a slab or whatever we're pouring. We're going to fill in that spot right there where we're dumping concrete, and then I'm going to set the truck over a little bit and back him back up to get this piece right here in the front. Just checking to make sure I don't get it above the chalk line. There was quite a bit of ledge under this, so you know the forms, like I said, they're sitting right on ledge. Couldn't get them dug down anything any more than they are right now. But when pouring to a chalk line like this for us, it isn't very hard for us. We're, we're used to magging edges to a chalk line, getting everything nice and flat. You can see the only part that's really, the only part of the forms that are really degraded is way back in that left-hand corner where we started. And then as the forms moved here towards the camera, they're all up a little bit, inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches over here on the right-hand corner. And that's just the way the rock in the ground, you know, that's just the way the rock, the ledge in the ground was there. There wasn't anything we could do about it. I guess for one for one thing the slab's going to be sitting on something pretty solid if it's sitting on solid ledge. So now what we'll do is we'll get as much concrete poured out as we think we need without getting too much in there. We don't really want to have to shovel any out. So we may end up, you know, filling this up, but leaving the corner just a little bit low. That way if we're high back up in there where Darren's bull floating, we can pull that high back into the low spot, not have to shovel any out. What Jim's doing, he's holding up on that rebar while the concrete gets under it. And then he can vibrate the edge, get that all nice and smooth. So Luke just felt like he was a little bit low there where his feet are. And we wanted to get that side screeded down just a little closer to the right hand side of the slab. So he just kicked a little bit more up there where his feet were. And now we can just walk up to the other end there, turn the screed, what we call turn it, and come down this, this long bay right here. You can see how we left the right-hand corner just a little bit low. I'm going to jump right outside. I'm over there on the right. Rather than trying to screed or kick in that really deep edge, we'll, I'll just screed it from the outside. So for the rakers here, you know, raking the, raking the concrete, again, they want to leave it just a little high. And But over there to the left of Luke, Luke's screening on the left. We want to make sure that not too much gets built up over there. That's the hardest part for the guy screening is 
if too much gets built up over there, see like he's got to kick it over there. Then you got to start and move it. Otherwise, well, we're low in the middle too. That's another reason they start. But if too much gets built up on the left-hand side of Luke, then he's got to start because he can't see what he's screeding. He's using, he's using that other part that we already screeded as a guide to go by for this part. You can see it's starting to build up there a little bit. And Harvey keeps going over there and pulling some of that high out so Luke doesn't have to stop. But we definitely weren't too high. Now we're going to just get enough in there that so we can get the shoot out of the way. Get this last piece done. You can see Jim. Jim's over there on the left putting those ankle bolts in. He's got one side almost done. He likes he likes being really, really fussy with those. He gets them really straight. Gets them all exactly the same height. Exactly the same distance away from the form. And then that way when the builder goes to set his sill down, you know, when he measures, he knows that all the holes that he's got to drill to put the sill over the ankle bolts with are going to be all exactly the same distance away from the form or away from the outside edge of the slab. Now this slab is flat. We didn't there's no slope on it, so it's just going to be a flat garage and you know, that's most of the slabs we do for garages are flat like this. And I guess most of the builders, you know, if we if we, we could slope it from back to front so any water on the slab would run out the front. But I guess most of the builders they don't really want to build on something that's not flat or level, so I and I don't I guess I don't blame them. I don't do much building, but what I mean what they could do is they could uh, pour the slab pour the slab slope to the front and then pour a knee well knee wall around the outside edges that's flat on top and then at least that way you'd have a slope slab but let me know what you guys think about that and how you like doing them if you do these types of things so that's how it looks when it's screeded and then the bull float kind of really smooth smooths those screed marks out and that's what makes that what that's what makes power traveling a lot easier when it's nice and smooth from the bull float like that. And then I'm going to show Jim's going to set an ankle bolt right here, which is going to end up being between the two garage doors. And how easy it is to set those when the concrete's just been screeded and bull floated. And they don't. I mean, if the slump isn't too wet, they don't sink. You can see, you can set that right down in there. We call that wet setting, and that's going to stay right there. So. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.